The Walking Dead's shocking death. 20th Century Fox looks to be owned by Disney probably by the end of the year. And Broken Matt Hardy finally arrives to the WWE. This is Entertainment Talk. Watching ETN, where we don't do news, we just talk entertainment. Share and subscribe. Okay, guys, welcome back. Welcome to Entertainment Talk. This is going to be my new series where I kind of take one video to cover multiple topics. Since, as you guys know, I am not able to do the same amount of videos that I used to do back in the past. So, we are going to try and cover everything. So, the wonderful thing about this is you can take your time and listen to this. Obviously, it's going to be a video that's going to be a lot longer than my traditional videos, which were fairly pretty long as well. Um, and right now, we're going to we're going to be discussing uh, obviously some uh, multiple topics. As I said, we're going to talk about Broken Matt Hardy because uh, he debuted last Monday on Raw, and we expect to see him tonight again. We're going to talk about last night's episode of The Walking Dead. We're going to discuss a little bit of Star Wars because it is coming out this week. I'm sure a lot of you guys are excited for that. Uh, we have some good recent trailers that came out. If you've been on the channel for the last week, um, you saw that I've done two reaction videos to the Infinity Wars trailer as well as the trailer for Jurassic World. I almost forgot about it. You saw me thinking about it for a second there. The Fallen Kingdom. Uh, we are going to discuss a little bit of Godzilla and we're going to also go into this uh, purchase that looks like it's going to be a done deal regarding uh, 20th Century Fox uh, going to Disney for an estimated $74 billion. Insane. Insane. So we'll talk about that. Uh, so before we get into these topics, I uh, just want to let you guys know, as you know, as I already mentioned, this video is going to be a, a standing video series on the channel that I'm going to do anywhere between every other day to every other two days or three days. It all depends on the flow of entertainment uh, related topics and how they release into the media. And we can discuss it here. Also, uh, I'm going to be sticking with the Godzilla stuff, so don't worry, guys. We're going to discuss a little bit of it here, but not much. But we will do more focused videos on that, uh, hopefully later on this week or early next week. And we're also going to discuss, um, not in this particular video, but another video series I'm going to start doing is, I remember, a lot of you guys remember, many, many times, I've always talked about how I wanted to incorporate gaming into my channel because I'm a big gamer. You guys know this. And... I think the biggest problem I've always had is the games come and go so quick. Like you have, let's say, for example, a game like, um, let's say a game like Destiny, right? Everybody be playing Destiny for the next six months, whatever, and then something else will come out. Or if there's another game that releases, let's say something that doesn't have as much longevity. Let's say like a game like uh, The Last of Us, where you, for like maybe six weeks, that's a big deal of a game. And then because people beat it and this and that, it moves on. Games like Resident Evil like that. So... It's And it's always been tough for me to consistently try and keep up with all the game releases because I take my time when playing games. Uh, well, not only do I take my time, but also I don't really have quite the time to sit on a game like I normally do. So I really sat down and reevaluated what game is it that I'm constantly playing that has some relevance and I could actually cover on a specific gaming series on a regular basis. And it's actually a mobile game, which makes... It makes a lot of sense for me because I'm always on the move. And if I do play a game on mobile, I can play at home. I can play it while I'm out. And there is a mobile game that I play quite a lot called Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. And um, there's a lot of Final Fantasy fans out there. Um, some of you guys are here in the channel. So I'm going to be starting to do content for Final Fantasy Brave Exvius starting this week. So basically, Godzilla and... Final Fantasy Brave, uh, Brave Exvius will be my constant videos that I do on the channel. And then you have this all-purpose smorgasbord of a video I'm doing right now. That will be a video I will be doing at least as often as every other day, as long as every other three to four days. Uh, as I said, all depending on the rotation of entertainment-related topics that come out that we can discuss as they release into the mainstream media. So, Broken Matt Hardy, I want to talk, I've, I'm excited to talk about this because Matt Hardy is probably the reason I'm back to watching wrestling. 
Uh, and I got to give a shout out to Jim Kelly about this because Jim Kelly put me on to Broken Matt uh, way back when, uh, sometime earlier this year or late last year, if I can recall. And I started watching the videos and watching his gimmick when he was back in TNA and all that. And I I fell in love with it. I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was great because uh, it's such a far distance from V1 or the original Matt Hardy. So, you know, I've been slowly starting to watch wrestling again since last August. It's been a little over a year now. I started watching again last, not this past SummerSlam, the year before. And I've been slowly getting into it. I pretty much have been watching almost all the pay-per-views since then. I don't watch Raw or SmackDown all the time unless something big might happen. Uh, maybe sometimes I'll watch it the day after uh, a pay-per-view. But I generally don't watch them because, number one, three hours of Raw is just, that's just too much for me. I, I, can't, I can't sit down and just watch that for three hours, you know, because it's not always wrestling. A lot of it is just, you know, the mic and all the talking and it's a little bit too much. Uh, so a lot of times I'll go on the Facebook page on, on the nation and I'll keep tabs of something big going on on there. And if something happens, then I'll pop on the TV and I'll check it out. Otherwise I don't bother. Um, and same thing with SmackDown. I just don't, but again, I try to keep up with it. So you don't expect me to talk like raw SmackDown reviews and stuff like that. I just won't do that here. There are plenty of channels that do that. But when something big happens in wrestling, I will discuss it. This is a big deal, at least for me personally. I, I don't know about anybody else, but for me, this is a big deal because Matt Hardy's broken gimmick is the reason I got back into watching wrestling. And um, I've been excited for it to come back, to the, to come not come back, but come to the WWE. And finally, we got to see it in, in its full entirety last Monday. And uh, obviously, he's going to be changing it up a little bit. It's going to be more woken. He will... From what I've read, he will be referencing the broken angle at some points, but generally under the WWE, it's going to be Woken Matt Hardy. And one of the reasons I heard for this is that since he had such a hard time, him and his brother, of getting the rights to the broken deal, um, in this case, he owns a broken deal now. He will do the Woken gimmick in WWE. That way, when his career is over, or if he happens to move on, he will still have the broken Matt Hardy gimmick that he can use on his own social media. And, you know, the guy was doing wrestling matches at his house. So who knows what he's going to plan for his future? Because, you know, these guys, you know, the Hardys are pretty old. And, and, and you know, WWE is a youth movement now. So we don't know how long they're going to last there. Up until he finally woken, Matt Hardy was kind of struggling a little bit on his own without Jeff. And Jeff, that's kind of always been the case. This is why... I like this gimmick so much because it shows that Matt has obviously taken a lot of time throughout his career. He's got he's gone through so many different changes in some instances to try and see what works, and he finally got something that works. And now the best part is, and I'm not saying it's good that Jeff is injured. It's not. I, I like the Hardy Boys. I've always been a huge fan of them, even back in the day. Um, but in a way, it's kind of a good thing that Jeff is out of the limelight right now, right as Matt is starting to use this gimmick because now he can establish himself without any assistance from his brother who he did leverage in this gimmick back in the day before they got to WWE. But now he can kind of do it on his own. Everybody loves to see Matt do his crazy shit when he's in this role. So I'm excited to see, I'm actually going probably going to watch raw tonight. I know it sounds crazy, but because again, it's a three hour show, but I probably am going to watch it tonight. Because I want to see what's going to happen. I want to see, and I don't, I might just wait the three hours for that. I'm not going to lie. I might just wait the three hours for that. So I'm excited. Broken Man Hardy's back in the, is not back, but Broken Man Hardy is finally officially in the WWE as Woken Matt Hardy. And uh, we'll see what happens tonight. And if something big happens, you know I'm going to talk about it on the next Entertainment Talk, which will probably be Wednesday or Thursday. So um, now moving on to Walking Dead. This, this, uh, this is okay. Here's the thing. I, I I did hear rumors about this death and spoilers for anyone who hasn't watched The Walking Dead. Uh, turn this off now because I'm going to be going into heavy spoilers, both comic related as well as the show. So if you don't want to hear it, you got your warning. So, um, so this death last night uh, caught a lot of people by surprise. I was semi surprised because, as I said, I I heard the rumor about it. I got to be honest, I didn't believe the rumor. 
I didn't. I thought that, okay, this is, there's no way they're going to do this. And the death is involving Carl. Now, he's not officially dead yet. Uh, the show leaves off and he's still alive. But clearly they show a bite on his right, I think it was his right side, yep. And that's just an impending doom. So they're probably going to do a final hurrah for him in episode 9 and then go from there. Um, the most surprising thing is I read today on The Hollywood Reporter and a lot of people thought he left the show because he wanted to go to school. That's actually not true. He was intentionally written off the show. And even he was surprised. Now, this kid, according to this article, and I'll leave a link in the description, he actually bought a house out in Georgia because of the show and because he felt that he had some sort of security there. And why shouldn't he? Um, Carl's character is still alive in the comic book. Not only is he alive... He actually has a huge role in what's already passed in the comic, but would assumingly be upcoming on The Walking Dead show. He's got a huge role in the next saga, so to speak. So I was very surprised to read that they intentionally wrote him off. I really did think he wanted to go to college, which, I, look, I admire that. If, it, if he had left the show because he wanted to go to college, I would have said that's a dumb move. That's a dumb move because... And I know that sounds crazy. Look, I tell everybody should go to school. But this is a rare opportunity nobody gets. You know what I mean? So if he had willingly quit to go to school, I would have criticized him because he could have gone to school at any time. I myself went to went back to school when I was 27. This kid's what, 17, 18 right now? Well, he's, yeah, 18. So, you know, this time to go to college, the show's not going to be on that much longer. You figure at best another two to three years, I, I especially now. Um, I think this is a bad, bad, bad move by the, the showrunners on The Walking Dead. And one of the reasons it says here is that Scott Gimple, and once again, I'll leave the article in the description so you guys can check it out. It's a Hollywood reporter. If I happen to forget to leave it, I know I do that sometimes. Um, but according to this, Scott Gimple said that, and again, we're going into spoilers now for the comic, um, in the comic book, he had a hard time or he found a hole in the reason why Carl, or excuse me, Rick Grimes, who at one point in the comic appeared to kill Negan, only to find out after a two-year jump that Negan was still alive, he was just in jail or held captive. Um, And I can understand where he's finding a hole there. I get that. But I don't think you fill that hole by killing Carl. I don't. I think that's a horrendous move Um, because of Carl's role in what's supposed to be up and coming. So this, to me, is the early signs that they're going to start closing the deal on the show. Um, the ratings have not been that... It's not that they've not been that great. The ratings have been excellent, but they're on the decline. Uh, Walking Dead's already hit its peak. Um, and for whatever reason, this storyline they're doing right now on the show, the All Out War, up until the, the Whisper War in the comic, which I think is, uh, I don't know, I still think All Out War in the comic is the best storyline they have to offer. Um, this, to me, is a sign that it's it's time. It's, it's kind of heading into the twilight now, The Walking Dead, because what's the best content in the comic is not relating well on the show. It's not doing well. I think on the show, I think the, I think the beginning of the end is when they kill Glenn. That's my opinion. I think... And it, don't get me wrong, I it, that's comic stuff. I mean, that is right out the comic. They did they did justice to the comic in that aspect. But I think because the show has such a a large general audience that has not read the comic, and Stephen Yoon's character, um, you know, um, excuse me, and now I just said his name a second ago, Glenn Stephen Yoon's character, that's the actor Stephen Yoon, was so popular that I think they literally lost a lot of viewers because of that particular death. And and not only that, the brutality behind it. You know, and look, I'm not saying that stuff was bad. To me, it was great. That was right out the comic. It was, it was fantastic. But unfortunately, there are a large number of people who are not comic book readers that latched onto these characters on a different level. And not only, it's one thing to see your favorite character die, it's another thing to see him butchered like he was. 
Um, so killing Carl to me is is not a smart move for the show. I don't think it's going to help. And I think one of the reasons they did that was to start closing the show up. I don't know if we're going to get to the Whisperer War. If we get to the Whisperer War, I'll be surprised. And if we do get to it, that's probably going to be the last of it. Um, and I have a feeling the Whisperer War is going to link into Fear the Walking Dead. I think they're going to combine the two. Fear the Walking Dead will have a couple of seasons where it leads into the Walking Dead. Walking Dead, Whisper War, and then that's it. I think that's it. I think it's over after that. Um, I, I really do think this is a sign that they're starting to prepare for the end. And if you're going to prepare for the end of a show, you can't have all these characters together. You know, I'm not saying they all have to be dead and, and Rick's the only one standing, but there's certain characters that have to just go. You got to start shortening the pile a little bit. But it really doesn't make... And now if they plan to keep the show going, then this move makes no sense. And it's only going to make the next chapter more difficult because, as I said, Carl played a huge role in the next saga uh, involving the Whisperers. So I don't know how they're going to do that. I really don't. So overall, uh, I'll leave the article in the description. Very interesting. He did not quit on his own. He was living in Georgia and he had every plan to continue doing the show. But apparently they wrote him off. It was a creative decision and I think it's a bad decision uh, one that shows that I think they're starting to get ready for the end of the show. So, so that's that. And, uh, yeah, bad move. All right. So Star Wars, Star Wars is coming out this week. I'm hoping to go check it out on Thursday night, but we'll see, uh, if tickets are even available. I probably got to go buy the tickets right now. It probably makes sense. Um, and they're probably sold out. Who knows? But, uh, this is exciting, right? Star Wars. So we get the next chapter and there's a lot. Of speculation going on regarding Ray and Kylo and Luke, um, but I don't think there's much to speculate. I think it's it's going to be status quo. I think there will be temptation for Ray, but I think in the end of it, at the end of it all, I think she'll come out becoming a Jedi. Uh, I think Luke will bite the dust, and I think Kylo will stick around until the last one where he's got to face, uh, you know, Ray, uh, or if not. Ray kills Kylo in this one and then uh, fights uh, uh, Snoke in the next one. So who knows? But it, look, I mean, if you've seen most Star Wars movies, you can have a pretty decent idea of what's going to go down. Um, the first movies followed a, a good formula that worked in The New Hope. And I know people are going to get all triggered over this. It, it just it doesn't make me the movie was bad. It wasn't bad. I love the movie. I know I'm going to love this one. And I'll probably love the third one before we even see the trailer. We all are, right? Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't expect it to be anything shocking. I think it'll be pretty much what everybody expects, but it's getting a lot of good reviews. Of course. I mean, a lot of people are raving about it. Early reviews are, are saying that the film is great and there's some emotional moments and this and that, uh, the, I believe today's Monday. So tomorrow, I think the embargo lifts on review. So we'll get a better idea of what happens tomorrow. Um, I will do a review on the movie. Uh, whether I see it this Thursday, this Friday, whatever, we will be doing a review here, so that'll be exciting. But um, yeah, I, look, this is uh, the second part. Interesting that Daisy really does not want to get anyone involved with Star Wars after this saga. Um, I don't know if she's doing that because she doesn't want to be typecast. I, I guess I can understand that because that's that's what happened to Mark Hamill. Um, but there are some people out there who have made themselves. Uh, excuse me, not some people, but there were some actors who who came out of Star Wars having a huge career. Harrison Ford, you know, Harrison Ford. Uh, Hugh McGregor, you could argue that, but he kind of had an established career before getting involved in uh, in Star Wars. So you can make that argument, but I think he was well. I think he was fairly established before he got into Star Wars. I would say that he went on to some bigger roles, but he already had some pretty strong roles before he got into Star Wars back in the. 99 so um so that should be exciting it'll be interesting to see what you guys have to say about it uh if you're on the nation definitely we'll we'll be discussing this movie all week and it should be great so i want to move on to comic movies because uh while this has been it's been a couple of weeks since the release of thor and justice league um and i didn't get to do a review for justice league or thor did i do a review for thor no i didn't do a review for either one but uh to make a long story short i i actually enjoyed both movies I enjoyed both movies. Um, it's unfortunate that it looks like the DCEU has failed 
And it looks like they might be using the Flashpoint movie to reset some things. At least that's the whispers in the wind that I'm hearing. Those are the rumors because Justice League just did not do, do well, which this is just a case of too many fuck ups before you finally got your ground, before you finally got your footing. Because I thought it was a good movie. There are a lot of comic book fans who thought it was a good movie. But as you guys know, if you've been on the channel for a while, I've said this for the longest time. It was a, a, a message I sent to many Godzilla fans. No matter how hardcore you are, no matter how much you love this, if you don't have the general audience behind you, you're going to fail. And that's this is what happened with Justice League. Too many fuck-ups by DC. I, the general audience seems to have given up on them. And that's that was the case. You know, because Justice League was not a bad movie at all. I enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. I thought it was not... Obviously, Wonder Woman's the cream of the crop right now for the DCEU. But Justice League was good. It was good. I liked it. Um, but this is a case of the general audience giving up. They gave up. That's it. They're, they're just... DC and Warner Brothers just fucked up one too many times that they lost the faith of the general audience. And that's that's the case. They're from what I understand, they're not gonna make a huge profit, you know, if anything. They probably took a loss. So that's unfortunate. But this is also and look, I hate to say this. I know there's DC fans out there that are gonna kill me for this, but this is just the truth. They should have done the exact same thing Marvel did. It doesn't mean you're copying Marvel. That's called writing correctly and establishing your universe. When you establish your universe, it doesn't matter what universe it is, you have to establish your characters on their own before you can bring them together. And yeah, there's certain characters that in Avengers didn't have their own establishment before the Avengers first came together. But the core... The primary players in the Avengers had their own movies. Captain America, Iron Man, okay, Thor, Hulk to some extent, but he kind of was revitalized in the Avengers. Um, and then, obviously, the Avengers, you have the Black Widow and Jeremy Renner, but those two characters had enough development in Iron Man when you talk about Black Widow and Thor when you refer to Jeremy Renner and uh, Hawkeye. So, you know, Hawkeye was in the first Thor, obviously. Black Widow was in the second Iron Man. So you got to see them there, and you got to understand what they're about. And then they were pretty important in the early going of Avengers before we finally got the big team, and then they were part of the team. And it's just done right. DC had one Superman movie that was done a couple years before they got to Batman vs. Superman, which was originally supposed to be a Superman sequel, but, of course, those lovely executives told uh, Zack Snyder, you got to put Batman in it. And this is what happens. And, you know, look, we can make all the excuses we want with them getting involved. But as a director, as a creative director, Zack Snyder's got to step up and say, look, let me do this. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, in other, you can argue that he's not to blame, but in the way he is also to blame. It's, it's a 50-50 thing. Yes, it's not his pro it's not his fault if the creator or excuse me, the executives want to go in there and start fucking shit up. But there are some directors out there who have balls enough to say, get the fuck out of my work. If you want this done, if you want to make your money, then leave me the fuck alone. That's how you do it. Zack Snyder was being a good employee. Sometimes you can't always be a good employee. Sometimes you gotta step up and say, Look, boss, I don't agree with what you're doing. Let me handle this. That's what you hired me for. Step the fuck off. Obviously, minus the step the fuck off part, but you know what I'm saying. Um, so, you know, I mean, you had the Man of Steel, right? Then you bring Batman out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Because this Batman has no connection to Nolan's trilogy. So he just drops off the faces of the Earth out of nowhere. Um, now, in some ways, that's okay. We've seen Batman enough times to know his story. So, all right. That you can get away with. Wonder Woman, as much as we love her, as much as I love the movie, as much as I love her cameo in Batman vs Superman, one of the bright part, one of the uh, few bright spots, drops out of nowhere. Okay, then we get a glimpse of the Flash, we get a glimpse of Aquaman, and we get a glimpse of Cyborg out of nowhere. Just boom. Then you get your Wonder Woman solo movie, and then you get Justice League. So that's quick, that's fast. And in Justice League, you see Batman, of course, who hasn't had his own movie yet. 
Superman, who's probably the most established of all of them. Then you get Flash, Cyborg, and Aquaman out of nowhere. Just nowhere. You know, all we know of them is what we saw in Batman vs. Superman, and then that's it. That's rushed. I think they should have done Superman 2, a solo Batman film, your Wonder Woman film. And in each of those films, you highlight Aquaman in one film, maybe Superman, because maybe they can have a little tussle. And, you know, I, even though Superman's obviously stronger, other than Wonder Woman, Aquaman's the only one who could even give him a challenge. But Aquaman and Superman, maybe you put the Flash in Wonder Woman, right? And then, or Cyborg in Wonder Woman, because they had a pretty good scene in Justice League, and put the Flash in Batman, because Batman's the one that recruited the Flash. Perfect. And then you have your three characters now, even though they don't have their solo films, you have your three supporting characters to the three main characters in Justice League are already highlighted in those films, much like Black Widow and Jeremy Renner's Hawkeye were witnessed and highlighted in Thor and Iron Man, you know, so, but they didn't do that, you know what I mean, they wanted to go their own way, and hopefully they learn from this mistake, and they can right the ship, but we've been saying that for what, two years now, you know, they'll right the ship, they'll right the ship, they've righted the ship twice, once, it was Wonder Woman, everybody was behind that, but nobody was behind Justice League, and that's that, so, another thing I want to talk about is movie, all right, so I'm going to actually roll this one right into the Disney uh, attempted purchase of Fox. Now, this is big news because um, this will bring essentially the X-Men to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Not right away, according to what I'm reading here. Um, it would take some time even after the purchase. But yes, in in eventually you would be getting an X-Men related movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is huge news. This is huge. If this purchase goes through, and this this is as recent as two days ago, I'm looking at this, um, $74 billion, the price tag for this. And Disney would essentially get uh, Fox, uh, not Fox the whole thing, just, you know, they're not buying like Fox Sports or Fox News or anything like that. It's just uh, 20th Century Fox. And $74 billion, it could be done before the end of the year. And we're talking in the next three weeks. So in the next three weeks, we might have, I mean, you're looking at a potential, I mean, what's a juggernaut already becoming even more of a juggernaut. You know what I mean? Um, let's not even include the fact that Marvel would be getting their hands on some of their own creative stuff. Uh, obviously, the X-Men, Fantastic Four, um, and be getting some good villains in return. Doctor Doom, I mean, come on. That could be your next big villain. So, and this is good because... If this goes through, this kind of answers a question I had. What is Marvel going to do after the Avengers Infinity War? Because I'm assuming, I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm assuming you're not going to see be seeing Cap, Iron Man, or Thor much more after this. And while they have, I think, a good foundation going forward, when you consider they have the Black Panther, Captain Marvel, um, Spider-Man is going to go back to Sony, so we can't count on Spider-Man anymore. Um, and they have Doctor Strange. But they're still missing some really, really important core characters if if they decide to do away with the other three. Or they might reboot. The, who knows? I don't know what their plans are. Either way, whatever their plans are for the future, adding X-Men and a Fantastic Four and Doctor Doom and whatever, ever, whatever other content they got coming over to them. I don't know if they're getting Deadpool. I'm hearing that's not the case. They won't be getting Deadpool. Um... Not right away, anyway. They would have to get him by default because he's an X-Men. He's technically in the X-Men universe. Um, but I don't think they could be able to use him right away. But I think Fox is still making movies. I mean, they are obviously still making movies about him. But I think that they would have to wait until Fox is done with the character, I think. But either way, either way. This would be exactly what they need to start their whole second chapter of phases. Um, now, will they be successful without it? Probably. They've proven that they can be successful with no matter what they put out. Uh, when you think of movies like Ant-Man, nobody expected that to do so well, and it did. So, uh, very exciting. And this is just going to put more pressure on DC and Warner Brothers. Uh, because, you know, they 
they're going to get it right. It's just by the time they get it right, Marvel's going to be well into their second saga. They'll probably be into phase two of their second saga after the Infinity War before DC finally gets their shit together. Um, so, yeah, that's big news. So keep an eye out on that. Keep an eye out on that. The next two to three weeks might be, and from what I'm seeing here, it looks like it's more or less a done deal. They're probably just working out some brass tacks and some other things and, and probably, but overall it looks like, it looks like that's it. It looks like they will be purchasing 20th Century Fox uh, and we will see the X-Men come to the MCU in the near, in the, in the near future, at least within the next couple of years. So that's big. All right. A lot of good trailers the last couple of weeks. I obviously, like I said, I did a trailer to the Fallen Kingdom, Jurassic World. Um, I did a trailer to the, I uh, did a, excuse me, trailer reactions, not a trailer myself. I'm not that skilled. Um, <laughs> and a trailer reaction to Infinity War, which was probably the bigger trailer. But there have been some pretty good ones. Uh, Ready Player One was another one I checked out. I thought that one was very good. That looks a lot of fun. I got to say on that trailer, I don't know how much money they put into these licenses to get. Because, I mean, I'm watching the trailer and I see all these different game characters and movie characters, um, you know, making short cameos. And I'm like, they have, have to pay money for some of that. There's no way they can just use that freely. And I'm talking like some pretty big characters like Tracer from Overwatch, who was like the Overwatch, you know, mascot. I saw her in the trailer. You know what I mean? And they even had the Iron Giant in there. Now, I'm sure some of this stuff is owned. But the DeLorean, obviously the DeLorean, some Tron stuff in there. So very interesting. It looks like a, a, a great movie visually. And it's game related. So you know it's going to have an appeal to a lot of young people. Uh, so that was a great trailer. Infinity War trailer was fantastic. If you want to know how I reacted to that, just check it out here on the channel. Uh, it's one of the more recent um one of the more recent uh, reactions I did. And then uh, Jurassic World, which looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. That's, you know, there's really not much more I can say about that. Looks like fun. There are some other ones that are a little bit under the radar, though. And, God, I should have prepared for this before I did it. But um, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna look it up here real quick so you guys are hearing me typing. But it's a couple of movies coming out early next year or next year at some point that look like they're going to be pretty good. One of the ones... Uh, that I'm looking forward to. Pardon me. Um, one of the ones I'm looking forward to. God, I can't remember the woman's name now. You know what? I know what movie she's in now. You know what? I did all. I prepared for so many other things here that I was like, uh, I couldn't. Um, okay, here she is. All right, I think that's her. I think it's her in the movie. I'm pretty sure it is. Um. There it is. I think this is the movie. Here it is. Okay. So, of all the things I prepared for, I didn't prepare for this one because um, I just I didn't think about it at the time. But as I'm talking about the trailers, I'm like, oh wait, that movie looks good too. Um, A Quiet Place, starring Emily Blunt and John Krasinski. That movie looks pretty good. That movie looks pretty good. And I saw the trailer for that recently, and I thought that one looked pretty good. I'm actually looking forward to that. Produced by Michael Bay, but don't let that scare you. It's actually <laughs> um, it's actually directed by John Kroniski, so interesting stuff. I'm looking forward to that one. Emily Blunt's in it, and uh, I think that one's going to be good. I think that one's going to be pretty good. So that trailer I saw recently, obviously we've had the big ones, Jurassic World, um, Ready Player One, uh, Infinity War. So a lot of good stuff coming out. We got Star Wars coming out this week. Man, can you believe Infinity War is right around the corner? That's not that far away, people. Not that far away. All right. So second to last thing we're going to discuss before the end of this video, we're going to discuss some Godzilla, which uh, we haven't spoke about in a while. I know you, a lot of you guys are waiting for me to drop some Godzilla videos. They will be coming out soon. Um, Godzilla Monster Planet released November 17th. Yep, that's how long it's been since I've been doing videos on a regular. November 17th, it came out, and from what I'm hearing, it was pretty good. I didn't hear too much. I didn't look. I'm going to be honest. I didn't look into it because 
I don't want to spoil it for myself. It's supposed to be coming out next year for Netflix, and I'm looking forward to it, so I don't want to spoil it too much. I did hear some rumors that some of the monsters that were in the movie, a lot of people, you know, obviously people who saw the movie in Japan or those who were lucky enough to catch it on Netflix or whatever, um, that they people know what monsters are in the movie now and this and that. So, uh, I, again, I don't know the details. I'm kind of staying away right now. So in terms of Godzilla Monster Planet, I'm super looking forward to it, but I'm not going to spoil it for myself. Outside of that, um, there was a lot of Godzilla news, a lot of Godzilla stuff we that I missed here on the channel over the course of this year. Uh, we will get into that in detail um, over the next week or so. I need to look back and see what it is I missed because there were some videos I did here and there in between. But whatever I missed heading into this part of the year, I will cover in a video. We'll go back in time a little bit, discuss it, and I'll share my thoughts. So, but don't worry, we will be doing Godzilla-related stuff. Uh, very exciting. We are moving into 2018, so we are getting closer and closer um, to the uh, Godzilla sequel in 2019. But until then, we have Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim is coming out next year, so that'll be a lot of fun. And, of course, we have Godzilla Monster Planet. And there is also another Godzilla game coming out. Well, I don't want to say Godzilla game, Godzilla-related game. Uh, it's a survival game made by Namco. I forget the name of it. I know a lot of you guys have probably heard of it, but it's supposed to have you basically you're playing a survivor in the city when it's a, being attacked by monsters. And um, obviously there's an assortment of different monsters in the game, Godzilla being one of them. So uh, don't know if we'll get that over here. Um, you know, last time Namco made a Godzilla game, uh, they ported it over to the States, did not do well. Usually when something like that happens, they usually will not do that again. So I don't know if we'll see that game here in the States, if they've already confirmed whether they're going to do it or not. I don't know. I have not been keeping tabs on that game. So you can let me know in the comments if you've heard anything uh, as to whether or not they're going to port the game over to the States or not. Um, but I haven't been hearing too much hype about it like I was the Godzilla game when that first came out a couple of years back. And um, yeah, that game didn't do too well. I still have the game. I tried playing it and it was just a little bit too it, it, it's fun for a little while but after like a half hour 45 minutes i couldn't do it anymore so uh so yeah so that's just i just wanted to touch on godzilla a little bit so you guys know i'm not forgetting about it and finally to leave off this video um as i said in the beginning of the video i will be covering final fantasy brave exvius as my game for this channel because when i set like i said when i look back and i evaluate how many games that I play and how long I play them. I have been playing Final Fantasy Brave Exvius since August of 2016. So when I break it down like that, I say, you know what? Maybe that's a game I should just discuss, talk about. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe that's a game I should discuss and talk about and give tips on and stuff like that because I, I it's a gotcha game, so it's not for everybody. And... um. So that I'm going to be doing videos on that this week. Uh, if you happen to play the game and you don't know about it yet, but to give my first update on Final Fantasy Break of Exodus for anyone who might be playing that's on this channel, um, if you're a Final Fantasy VII fan, they are releasing the Final Fantasy VII banner this Friday, and it's going to have Cloud. So that's going to be a big deal. So I'll be discussing that this week. We'll do a banner review on that, and I'm going to be doing other videos on Final Fantasy Break of Exodus this week. And then going forward, that's what you guys are getting. Final Fantasy, Godzilla, and Entertainment Talk every other couple of days. That's it, guys. Anyway, so we will be doing another video probably Wednesday or Thursday in all-purpose Entertainment Talk and Godzilla, hopefully by this weekend, if not next week, and Final Fantasy Brave Activious uh, throughout the week, uh, including up until the banner when I'm going to review the banner that has Cloud, and that's that. So, you guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next Entertainment Talk. This is Rob signing off for ETN, where we don't do news, we just talk entertainment. Take it easy. Thank you for watching ETN. You can follow ETN on Facebook, Twitch, or Twitter, or join the Nation Facebook page. Don't forget to click that subscribe button on your way out.